So I'm just going to start off dry and hopefully try to make this a short video. This is the Tasmoto new rocker paddle. This is ESP32 C3. This does apply to the dual channel or the single channel and probably potentially some of the other models are coming out with some three-way dimmers and fan controllers all in this rocker paddle series. They are pretty neat looking. I know some people didn't like the previous models. Definitely check out my other video on these. But the problem is, yep, they got Tasmoda on them and everybody's loving the whole ESP Home thing, right? Yeah, I still use both. Maybe that's another video we'll do to go why I use both. But the cool thing is, what if I want to put Bluetooth proxy on here for doing all the Bluetooth sensors and everything? Well, Tasmoda can't do that. This is ESP32 C3. And the problem is Tasmoda changed the memory partitions and it's not easy to really just go put ESP Home, ESP IDF on it with over the air. But luckily Martin Jerry has done some cool stuff for us. They're easy to pop open. And if you don't want to get a cool spudger, I won't make you buy extra crap for this video, is just go get a flathead screwdriver. Yeah, because, you know, all flatheads matter, even this one. So, yeah, it's, you just take, and I like to use the ground plate over here on the side and just shove it in there. That's what she and said. And just take and twist it, and you should hear a pop. And you should pop out there. Now, do be careful because there is that little wheel for the stupid white light LED night light I talked about. Don't break that off. So you don't want to like pry it on this side first. Use the ground side where the ground plate is. And then you can just go around and slowly pop it off. And it will pop open. Go slow. Take your time. I have opened this several times. So mine looks a little easier. Yours might be a little tight. But you don't need to unplug it. Now, sometimes I do slide this ground wire in and that gives me a little more room and, and then you can disconnect it. And because what you're trying to do is get to these four pins right here. There's four little holes here. We're going to put GPIO wires in those and we're going to flash it with ESP Home. It's pretty damn simple to get this done. There's no soldering to any of this. So what else do you need? You've got your Martin Jerry switch, right? Well, a couple things you will need is the little red guy. Yeah, I can definitely see it is a little one. Um, I like this one because it was really works well with a lot of different things. Now, if you want to go big, you want to spend a little money, you want to get something you're going to use and it'll be right and work with a lot of stuff. I highly recommend the Volt Link model. This is also CP2102. This is just a USB-C. It plugs in, it has good power. You even have an adapter for installing stuff for like some of the new Shelleys and stuff. This is done at voltlog.com. Um, I'll leave the link in the description for this. I'll leave it all of this different things. And as always, yeah, sometimes those are affiliate links, but there's no additional cost to you. It does help out the channel though. So next thing you'll need is some DuPont jumper wires. Now you can see this conglomerate I did here is I didn't have female to male. And why we need that is to put that in those holes. So what I did is I just did female to female and then male to male to make my jumpers up. But um, yeah, this is probably not something you should do, but it works in a pinch. Just make sure it is connected. Now, the one thing that is different for like the little red guy, there's no secondary, I'll zoom in because it is kind of close. There is no secondary ground. If you can see that there, there's only one ground pin, unlike the Volt Link, that you're gonna get a bunch of different ground pins yeah, see on the Volt Link, sorry about the focus, autofocus isn't always your friend, even on a nice camera. This one has multiple ground pins to it. It makes it really easy, unlike the little red guy only has the one ground pin. So what do I do in that case? Well, you can do a couple of things, but I, again, I said no soldering. Well, this is soldering. 
I soldered a header and I made just like a splitter and that way I can just plug in a bunch of DuPont cables and split them off. If you really want to go old school, you could just cut one of your DuPonts and then you could twist them together. It's no big deal. That way, because we do need two grounds. We need a ground to go to ground and we need a ground to go to GPIO 9 to install ESP Home on this. Now, the other thing I highly recommend is a USB data passing cable with a switch in it. Now, the cool part is basically when you get everything plugged in because we're just again soldering and you want to power cycle things, you don't need to unplug and plug stuff and your wires get unconnected. You just flip the switch. It's that simple. I went for years without using one of these and I still kick myself today that I should have got this a long time ago. It's a really great tool, but again, it is optional. Okay, so I'm gonna use, since not everybody can get the little volt links, they are kind of expensive with shipping and everything. Um, I'm gonna use the little red guy. These are fairly inexpensive, to show you it can be done with this thing. So we'll use my little splitter. I'm gonna go ahead and connect up my ground wire. This one already has a male on it. So I'm gonna use simple colors. I'm gonna go with 3v3. Um, then you need TX and RX. We'll do yellow for TX, and then we'll use the orange for RX. So then what we need to do on here, and I will post, and it is on my website, the pin layout of this. Very important, the squared one is 3v3. That's your hot. And you just shove them in, and that's it. And just, I like to have them at an angle, that way it's tilted, and you know it's pushing against the metal part of the PCB trace. The next one is gonna go where, that's actually RX, which is gonna be the TX from this one. Because basically you want the TX from here to go to the receive on this side. Think of it like you want the ear to go to the speaker, and then the other way is gonna go speaker to ear. So once you get all four shoved in there, there is another ground you need to be able to put this chip into boot mode, kind of like going into the BIOS mode. That's another ground, and just that goes in the second hole here. I'll show that in my picture a little better since the video can kind of be confusing to which hole that is. And then we'll plug this up, this USB, make sure it's off. And we actually get our lights you can hear it on a computer if you have your speakers on but then the easy part let's jump over to esp home and send it over to this puppy so this isn't going to be like a whole thing on how to install esp home probably if you've clicked on this video you already have esp home but if you don't it's pretty damn simple especially for haos users you really just need to go in and just add the add-on for the esp home dashboard or compiler or whatever they're calling it these days. It's pretty damn simple. All it does is compile the bin files, which is the software that goes on your switch and send it over. Pretty damn easy stuff. So once you get that installed, you should get a dashboard that looks something like this. Mine has a lot of red crap on it because my stuff is off or a lot of testing different things or whatever. Um, so I already have my one channel idea, but we're going to be doing the two channel is you'll just need to hit new device. I'm going to say continue. Uh, everybody else does it differently. This is just my way of doing things. I like to keep it simple. You know, the whole kiss principle. And so I'm going to do switch dash MJ. And they did change it to two channels instead of calling it two gang on the listing. I like to see that they listened. <laughs> I guess they watching the videos. So next, this doesn't matter what you pick. Go ahead and pick ESP32C3. I'm not using encryption keys. You're more than welcome to use them. I'm going to say skip. And now you have your YAML file ready to go. No, I'll show you. We don't care about any of this. So we're just going to copy over all of this. The only thing I'm going to keep is the name because, of course, your name may be different. And I just, I hate to, to retype stuff. So I just want to copy and paste. So delete all of this and just keep the top three lines. And then you can head on over to my website. If it's not already on there, you can just go over here, hit devices, and then go down to switches. And you'll see I have the RP, which is the 
the paddle series. They have the dual and the single. And then we can scroll down and get to the YAML file. So of course we've got the pinout on here and how to put the wires in everything for you, but we've already done that. So we just need to scroll on down and get the YAML file. It's already done for you and everything. And you can just hit this button right here and say copy, and then we'll paste it in. And I'm gonna scroll up here. And this is why I said to keep both of them because in case your name is different than mine in my particular example, then you could just you know delete this section right here and then boom, boom, and you're done and it's ready to go. It has your name, it's not gonna screw it up. If you wanna go and do the Bluetooth proxy is uncomment this, it's just those lines. And then of course, if you have any other settings for like Wi-Fi or whatever, that's all up to you. If you wanna go through and change some of this stuff, you're happy to, it's just mine's just kind of like a suggestion to kind of get you there. And then you'll hit save. Don't forget that part. And then you'll hit install. Now the problem is we don't have this like connected to this exact host and everything. I like to do it old school because I have different setups and everything. If you can plug it into the ESP home device builder, you're more than welcome to hit that button, but I'm just gonna do the manual download. Hit manual download, and depending on your box and everything, it may take a while to compile. Um, it just depends on what you have, like a Raspberry Pi or green, especially those slower boxes, they're gonna take a while to compile. You can see mine's probably almost done by the time I get done talking about it. What you'll want to pick, this is important, you'll want to pick factory format. This is gonna be from using Serial. It actually says, I believe, Serial using ESP Home Web Tools. So go ahead and hit that and then in your browser, it may say, hey, like this was downloaded, but you may have to hit the keep button. Be careful that you do wanna download that bin file. Now, if you do wanna use ESP Tool Pi and do it the manual way, I love doing that that way. You're more than welcome to. I do need, do need to update this page, but it is fairly simple. But do be careful, you do need to do the entire flash and it uses the factory bin file. Don't try to just use the standard way. It won't write all the partitions and you'll be stuck. If you want the easy way is just head on over with your browser to webesphome.io and then it's gonna ask to hit connect. Now, if you don't have your USB TTL adapter connected, look, mine's not because my little switch is off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and then there it is. I'm gonna hit the button, hit connect, and you may be tempted to hit prepare for first use. Don't do that, just hit install because we already have our bin file. You'll choose the file you just downloaded. Mine's this factory, it's the latest file, and then hit install. And it's pretty much that simple and you'll find out if you did your wires correctly, like transposing the RX and TX like I talked about. And it looks like I did mine right. Can actually kind of see the red LED. It's going through erasing, and especially you know you've done it right is then when it starts to get to doing the percentage of installing the actual bin file on the software, and you can see the lights flickering away on the USB TTL. And just be patient, let it do its thing. Don't browse away like it says. It may take a little bit of time, but it's not too bad. We're gonna jump to forward for it gets when it gets done. So once it's done, hit the close button. And then remember that wire I told you that was that extra ground for just doing the bootloader and why you want to use that special little switch for doing USB? Well, this is where that comes into play. Turn off the switch and then remove that extra GPIO 9, the one, the ground that was all the way by itself. Now do make sure it's not touching something else, gonna short something out, and then turn the switch for your USB or plug the USB back in. Now this is not connected to mains power. Do not connect the mains power and this TTL at the same time. We're gonna wait a little bit, but then we should be able to jump over to the ESP Home compiler dashboard thingy. I do have some patience. It can take a little bit to join the network that first time. 
And if it doesn't, maybe you want to jump in the Discord. I got the Discord link down below in the video description. Come ask for some help. It's pretty simple to do. We'll walk you through all the things. You can see mine came online. I'm going to hit logs. And I have the log and you can see it's connected and there's a switch. I should be able to jump on over to Home Assistant and see a new device. If you don't have auto discovery working, MDNS, replicator, or not working your network, you're using IoT, VLANs, whatever, you may need to down here at the hit add integration and add the IP manually for it. But for most people, this should pop in just like this. And that's pretty much it. It'll be in here, it'll say notifications, hit add, and yep, I'm gonna add the switch to it and hit success, boom. And then now it should be in my ESP home devices. Got the two channel, and sure enough, I do have, there's the PWM light. That is the little red night light. It, I did set it up in the YAML file to be as an actual dimmer, so you can set those. And then of course you get the two relays. Now, when you turn these on, you're probably not gonna hear the click because those relays won't be able to turn on until you get them with mains power. And, but I wanted to check everything before we disconnect wires and put it back together and all that and check it in our actual wall switch setup. Now, lastly, because I did install Bluetooth proxy, I have the HACS Bermuda and I should see that in the configuration for Bluetooth proxy. And you can see I do have it here, switch MJ2 channel. It shows zero seconds ago. I know it's actually doing the Bluetooth proxy thing, which is pretty awesome to have a light switch checking and doing all the Bluetooth sensors and dumping all that back in. But again, you don't necessarily have to do that. It's just kind of cool that you can do that with a light switch in your wall. Great for like the bathroom and everything for like doing temperature, humidity sensors that are Bluetooth, like those SwitchBot ones. Those are pretty damn great little sensors for cheap. Well, that'll about do it for this one. Remember, turn off your USB, disconnect all your wires. And you can put the thing back together. Watch out for the ground plate. You'll line it back up. Just reverse the process. Take your time. Do verify because I have had it one time where it didn't snap back correctly and put things in a bind and I couldn't push the buttons. And, but then I just had to pop it open again and then put it back. It just, if you take your time and you're careful and put that little wheel back in that slot, you can snap it back together without breaking your switch. So not a hard process, no soldering to make it easy to jump over to ESP home. I do know there is that GitHub thread and it seemed kind of convoluted rabbit hole. If someone has like an easy process for maybe doing that to jump over without screwing up our partitions and we can totally invalidate this whole video and do another one, definitely let me know down below. Maybe I'll try it on a Node MCU first. But until then, just a tried and true way of doing it. Serial is gonna work for me and it gets everything done and I know it's gonna work. So if you got any other questions or anything, you can check out my Discord, shoot me a comment down below, love to hear from you. And I do thank all the Patreon members, YouTube members, we definitely couldn't do it without you. And yep, y'all know the drill, press all them buttons and y'all take care.